Anyway. Um, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by ITPro.TV. You can get a free 30% coupon if you go to ITPro.TV slash ring. I have more on that in a second. And Paul is wide awake, ready for this podcast, ready to start the day. Here we are. You know what today you know, is? Yesterday, a- for no good reason whatsoever, I disconnected my computer, the stand, the monitor, the speakers, took them all off the desk, mm-hmm. put a laptop in one of those kind of foldable things where it puts the screen up at the right height, you mm-hmm. know? Connected the Thunderbolt dock, got it all working. Video was actually a little worse because, you know, the little webcam on the laptop isn't that great. Mm-hmm. But then, and then it was like, I'm going to be on like a Microsoft thing twice this week. What am <laughs> I doing? <laughs> like, I literally got it working. And I, I was curious, like, what the video quality would be over Teams, you know? And I still am. I, mm-hmm. And I want to experiment with this. But once I got it all set up, I was like, why did I just do that? Yeah, I took it all down and put it all back the way it was. Well, th- there's two things in my head. One mm-hmm. relates to your video quality or Teams. Paul, you may have meant, heard a few times people always mention like you have a blurry webcam. You ever heard this? No. No. What do you mean? Uh, well, Paul, I'm gonna. One of the issues <laughs> with our arrangement, as opposed to some of the other podcasts that you do, um, well, I guess maybe yes. not all of them, but anyways, is my video on mm-hmm. this side of the podcast is uncompressed because. Right. Because it's all yeah, right here. Yeah. Paul's gets mutilated across the team's algorithm and presents as whatever. And so I it, should try, I, I wonder, I should try like the web app sometimes. No, that does, web, yeah, web app is worse. Worse. Because <laughs> I lived with that I, for I, a I week. Know, I, I also put petroleum jelly on top of the lens because I don't want people watching me while I'm working. I mean, do you think that had anything to do with it? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, okay, yeah. as long as you use the butter knife to scrape Why it off. Why does the podcast look like a 70s porn movie? What's going on here? <laughs> sorry anyways much. it's it's also a great day to not be an exchange server admin not that there's really <laughs> any great day that day's but, every day <laughs> I would say but, but uh, yes, yes. Microsoft mm-hmm. issued a pat, patches yesterday because they found I think it's pronounced Hafnium is the name of the group or whatever uh, yeah. they found a bunch of active zero day exploits hitting on premises exchange servers so if you have those you're going to be patching and you need That's to do fine. it quick also, may I point you to the cloud, which is a happening thing. The cloud's up there, but there's a roof in the way. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so there, there's that. And you can have fun. Actually, Microsoft released a couple of PowerShell scripts too. So if you're really oh yeah uh, interested in finding out if you were, in, which probably you should be if you're managing an Exchange Admin server. Um, it's a. This is not a state sponsored thing, right? It's just. I a, don't. They didn't. No, don't. I don't think they. Well, actually, I, I don't remember honestly if they said either way, but it's actively being exploited, so it doesn't really matter because they're targeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Who cares who it is? <laughs> yeah, Microsoft listed like the you're industries being hacked, that are. It doesn't matter. That are being the targeted. The first question isn't who's doing this. To us? Right. <laughs> the first question is we got to you know let's fix this. They listed out like the industries that are being targeted, and I read them all. I'm like, that's everybody. <laughs> Like the only thing that wasn't listed was like BWW Media Group Petri dot com in that list. Um, <laughs> well, we don't. Uh, do we use Exchange? I, well, no, not obviously. No, not. we're all yeah, Microsoft three sixty five and um, yeah. cloud service provider people. We, I, I, we don't want to be Exchange admins. <laughs> yeah, we would never. Although Paul, we'd never get email again, and that might be not a bad thing. Interesting. Well, let's uh, push it at the next meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go on prem. Now, hear me out. Nick, Nick, you got enough doing over there? How about how about yeah, yeah. spinning yeah, up an exchange server while you're at it? So, uh, Ignite Day One under the belt. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think of the keynote? Um, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm used to these like really long keynotes where Bomber or Nadella, whatever, get up on stage and just ramble honestly about nothing. At least there was a product announcement in this one, so that's always a, a benefit. Well, was there? I mean, <laughs> you talk about that, right? Uh, so, yeah. I, I this is a vaguely cynical thing. I, I I hope it doesn't come off wrong, but I feel like Mesh is to Hololens what Viva is to Microsoft. Yeah, that's what, I was thinking the same thing, right? And I don't mean to say that it's literally nothing and it's just branding, but maybe I do. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I. I the other thing that's weird about it is just from a timing perspective. Obviously, 
technology takes a long time to come together, to evolve. You know, mm -hmm. you want to release a new product or service, whatever. It's not something that happens overnight. And we are literally closing in on the one year anniversary of this pandemic, at least here in the United States, from the, you know, from the lockdown time frame. And uh, now they have something ready that will enable mm -hmm. people to work virtually and may maybe have it be a little more natural, although I think putting a Darth Vader helmet on your head doesn't really help in that department, but whatever. Um, and, and we're getting re we're, get we're literally gearing up to get people back in the office, right? Um, it and it's not their fault. I don't mean it like that. But I mean, it, 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 I hope that this is a solution that doesn't need to be as used as often as it might have been like a year ago or whatever, yeah. or six months ago. That's all. Yeah. yeah. I think that's um, fair, right? I mean, the only uh, thing I can point out is that, like, sensible brands. I think maybe is the way to put it. Brands, uh, licensable entities of some mm -hmm. kind that they like. Viva is a collection of things that largely already existed and you know are being evolved, of course. Um, and now we're going to call it a thing. And I feel like mesh is maybe kind of the same thing. Yeah. If that. I mean, the only thing I can think of when, when they were talking, well, first off, they were showing off meetings in VR and I was like, oh God, like, please no. Uh, like we, we have genuine trouble joining meetings today knowing whether or not we're muted. Right. I, like right. getting into a VR experience is going to be. Avatar picking his butt, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like, uh, oh, am I on? I, you know, I mean, yeah. Also. And again, I, I I don't mean to be over, overly critical about this. I honestly I, I'm excited and happy that they're pushing mm -hmm. AR and MR again after it seems like they kind of didn't really push it for a year, right? Yeah. Or over a year, you know, two years or whatever. Um, I, I, there's still a cartoonish aspect to AR, um, mm -hmm. you know, compared to real life, right? And that's again, it's just a limit of the technology. We are where we are. Things are starting up. It's fine. Um, I get, you know, showing off like you standing in an underwater world is not necessarily, I think, how enterprises see the future of work. Mm -hmm. Throwing that out there. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what would have been better. I mean, many, many years ago, and by many, I mean literally 96, possibly 97, Microsoft did a, a, a demo on, uh, they did these virtual events back then where you actually would go to a theater mm -hmm. and they would broadcast it from Redmond using satellite technology and you could people around the country or around the world probably could watch them virtually. It's the first time I ever saw Joe B. Uh, he was doing a demo of what was probably IE2, possibly IE3. I think it was IE2. And um, they they had an early chat solution, which was uh, like a virtual reality world. And there were like these heads floating around in kind of a, a an outer space planet mm -hmm. with wind sounds and blah, 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 whatever. And that's what this was like to me. It was like, this is not how people meet in real life. It's cartoonish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it's better than just typing text, right? How we used to chat, you know? How we actually still chat. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it felt a little off um, for the for the audience, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's important to remember. The other thing, that too, that I didn't, I didn't quite align to on this is that Mesh is really a development platform in Azure. Yeah, they have a right. they have a Paul. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but they have a developer conference in May, where they need those developers to build on Mesh to create these experiences. So, okay, so you've raised okay. This is because you raised that issue, I will just say uh, the other thing that's a little weird about this show to me is, um, why it's happening <laughs> in some yeah. ways. I mean, it seems like a lot of the announcements. Uh, if you go through that book of news, right, there are eleven thousand things in there, whatever it mm -hmm. is. Um, you can see, th you can pick out things in there where you're like, this would have just happened. This, this was just happening. Like oh, some yeah. Outlook features, some Teams features, you know, like these things could have been announced at any time. And the thing is, these things are announced at any time. Why would Microsoft announce Viva two weeks before Ignite? That's crazy. This would have been a big announcement for Ignite. Oh, that is a good point. Like, yeah, this, why wasn't that at Ignite? I feel like a lot of this stuff is, um, it has a semi-arbitrary feel to it uh, mm -hmm. as far as timing and you know, whatever. Yeah. So, I feel like um, I'm complaining. I don't know why I'm. I'm not complaining. I want to. Be yeah. No. It's this. just. It's just feedback, right? I mean. Yeah. 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 I mean, I made a tweet about something related to the mesh demo, and and Frank, you know, kind of mm -hmm. 
something like, well, the, you know, the future is hybrid, right? I think yeah. what I said was, this makes me want to have meetings in person, right? And right. I didn't mean that like, oh my God, this is terrible. I can't wait. I, I just miss meeting with people in person. I feel like, mm. you know this, you and I talk, we have meetings and whatever, but it's I feel like our, <laughs> with our little team, things go better, mm -hmm. faster. It's happen when we're together. I mean, it's just a reality of life, you know? And yeah. Uh, but it's, but Frank's right, to be clear, I mean, yeah, the future is hybrid, and I think that's the coolest thing about what's happening is, let's say a year from now or a year and a half from now, they have Ignite 2022 mm -hmm. in-person event. A lot of people still aren't going to come, but because of the experience they've had with the previous several shows between Build and Ignite and Inspire and whatever else they do, um, they'll have a, a really healthy online component where people can watch the show virtually, come to the show virtually, press and customers right mm -hmm. and um i think that's such a great outcome i mean it's i don't not, not that i wanted the last year to happen but it will make these events better for everybody no doubt about it yep and if you want to make yourself better uh -huh, uh, you can go to itpro.tv slash ring for a nice little coupon but itpro.tv is a skills development platform addressing the global it and skills gap by providing online training for it professionals at every step of their career with training that's more like a talk show rather than just being you know a, a live or whatever people just yelling at you it's more like a talk show it's much more affordable and convenient and good for business and for personal growth you can learn more in the description of your application or just go to itpro.tv slash ring you can't do that what i just switched back to the video and it got brighter in my face hmm. Hmm. did uh, i didn't watch this did panos talk much about next gen windows and his session you right now just said as much about it as he did fantastic this, you got to understand the session was 14 minutes long. <laughs> mm. I think, and I, I, I wrote this in comments this morning. Someone, you know, was complaining about this. And I was like, you, you can, there, there are these things when you've covered Microsoft or you uh, are a Microsoft enthusiast, perhaps for so many years, you, you see these things over and over again. Like, and you can, you kind of get an understanding for the, the vibe of the company as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. and there are these things that Microsoft does that are so Microsoft, right? So uh, one of them was the the mesh thing where you know, little emoticon things are floating up and popping. Yep. And I complained about it on Twitter, and some people were like, "You know, you can turn it off." I'm like, "Yeah, I know you can turn it off, but what I'm it, it's distracting and stupid. It shouldn't be there." Like, okay, fine. And then it, it goes on. Alex Kipman comes out. He's got like an MR audience, and those guys are floating emoji or uh, emoji cut, whatever you call them, emojis, whatever they. And little hearts and clappy symbols, and they're making popping sounds. Well, guess what? Now we can't turn we can't turn those off. They're in the they're in the video. It's not audience out in the world like us. Well, I mean they are technically, but like we can't turn off what they're doing. <laughs> it's like that's typical Microsoft. Like they just don't like they want to do something cool for people. They don't understand how irritating it is to everyone else, and they they ultimately don't think it all the way through. And the Panos Panay thing I think was like that. I think there was a discussion at Microsoft where they were saying, look, we can't ignore Windows. And then this other group was saying, yeah, but we got this Windows thing coming up. We, it's in the future. We're, still, we're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. Like, But we get criticized so much because we never mentioned Windows. You, did you search for the word Windows in the book of news? It comes up like 11 times. Mm -hmm. This document is like 11,000 words long. Anyway, and, and it's all in just passing stuff. It's like virtual something for Windows or something. You know. Anyway, they were, I'm, I'm sure they were like, look, we got to say something. Panos, you got to get out there. And he's like, I don't have anything to say. Like, just do a 15-minute thing. Just mention it. It will satisfy the need. And then he throws it away. And then he literally says, I'm not here to talk about the next generation Windows. I'm here today to talk about Windows 10. But only really briefly, because I don't actually have anything to say about Windows 10. Windows 10. Oh, my God. I'm excited. I'm pumped about Windows 10. I, bas I basically just did a session. It was... <laughs> It's like it's so that's so typical Microsoft. It's like yeah. they they heard the complaints, they knew they had to do something, and then they did something that all it's going to do is make people complain even more. You know, typical. Because I, again, they're going to have their own dedicated event, which we will be like, why didn't they just announce this at Ignite? <sighs> yeah, it's the Vivo. I, God, if only they had like a blog or something or. A, Channel Nine, something, something, or if YouTube existed, if only there was a way mm -hmm. for this company to communicate what they're doing. If only. <laughs> if only.
it's a tough. But, it's tough when you when you, all you care about is Windows, and it just yeah you know, just doesn't get the press, you know. Yep, but if you care about many other things in the IT Pro world, like an Exchange server, you can go to itpro.tv slash ring to learn more about Exchange servers, especially because they need to be batched. And we'll be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs>